This cubic table clock is a conundrum. Every clock has a signature on it to say who the maker was. But of course, this clock becomes more of a conundrum because it's got two signatures on. So who actually made it? When was it made? And for whom was it made? And now we've opened up the bottom of the clock, we can actually see the engraving. And here's Eduardus East Londini. And you can see that within the engraving, but the majority of the engraving is gilded with gold. Whereas on this corner here, almost squeezed in as an afterthought, we've got A, Azurus, Fromentil, Fake It, and there's no gilding in that at all. So it was added later. My best guess as to what happened was, East got the order, but he needed Fromentil um, to develop the full Grand Sonnery mechanism. So he subcontracted the work to Fromentil. Fromentil finished it off, sent it back to East. East then engraved his name on it. And when it came back to Fromentil for assembly, I can just imagine Fromentil, he was a, a rascable character. <laughs> he would think, ah, East has put his name on all my work. And so he then engraves his own name as well. But when would it be made? When would it, all this happen? I can't see this happening in the middle of the Civil War. There, there aren't people with the money to splash around to this amazing little clock. It, it must have had um, a very, very rich patron. Charles II had returned in 1660 which is when most people say this clock was made. I don't think that can be true because it hasn't got a pendulum in it. The new technology of the pendulum is fully established. So I can't see this going back in time to have this balance wheel, which is a very poor timekeeper in comparison with a pendulum. If you rule out Cromwell for getting involved with East, because East was the royalist, then you have to go, I think, further back. And I think that comes right back to Charles I. And so I think this was designed and made in the 1640s, rather than uh, waiting for the restoration into the 1660s. That's my opinion.